Welcome to part two of our discussion, Money Banks Monetary Policy. Uh, we start this lesson by looking at what serves as money, what could be used in the role of money. So throughout history, there's been a wide variety of objects used as money. Sometimes, a lot of times throughout history, the objects held value outside of just being money. Um, those are called commodity money, right? The US dollar is not one of these. Uh, we'll, have, we'll share the term for that in just a moment. But you could imagine gold could be used to craft jewelry. So you can think of gold having an outside purpose. If you've seen uh, certain movies where they discuss things in prison, right? Cigarettes could be used as a currency. They're, uh, they have an outside consumption value instead of just being money. Uh, a dollar bill has no outside consumption value, right? It's, it's a tiny little sheet of paper. It has no outside value. So commodity money, it's an object that has substantial value in alternative uses. You know, if you don't want to use it as money, it still has value. So cattle used to be used as money, um, which I find fascinating, but right, it's an object that has outside value and people trusted it, so people would trade cows for other products. Um, cows didn't necessarily make the greatest um, source of commodity money though, right? If, um, if you want commodity money to be ideal, the money should be divisible. Well, unless you're looking for dinner, the cow is not gonna work too well for that. Uh, it should also be uniform, so everything should be the same. And if we talk about cigarettes, we might be okay here, right? You can divide a pack into 20 cigarettes. Um, each cigarette's relatively uniform in quality. Uh, storable and durable, uh, yeah, cigarettes maybe qualify a bit. Can't store for too long, but uh, it will go bad. Um, durability, uh, that's a bit of a question. Uh, the cattle on this one probably are okay. They might not be very divisible, might not be very uniform in quality but storable and durable. Uh, it is helpful if money's compact, right? The, um, you, you, it's ideal when you can have a fair amount of money in, in your pockets. Um, I, mean, it, I don't know how much you've thought about this, but the average household ha um, earns about $50,000 in a year. If you have $100 bills, you could, if you had like, maybe if you had a, a suit coat on and pants with pockets, you could probably have $50,000 on, carrying it on you, in cash. And nobody would really know, unless you drew attention to it, right? I mean, $10,000 is $100, 100 in bills, and maybe it's that thick, not very thick, um, for how much purchasing power that it has. You could... Um, could imagine that you could carry around fifty grand without anybody knowing that. That's um, that's that's definitely compact. A lot of purchasing power there. So there are issues with commodity money as we see this. Um, fiat money is what we uh, classify for money that has no outside non-monetary use. So fiat money, the government says it's money, and because of that, it's money. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be the government that says it's money. Uh, an intra uh, Bitcoin. No government decrees that it has value, but it maintains value as a medium of exchange. Uh, for the most part, money is decreed as such by, by some government entity. So that's fiat money. Like our dollar bills, they have no value outside of being money. Same with Bitcoin. Uh, same with the euro. Same with the yen. Same with alternative currencies. The reason that a $100 bill is worth $100 is because people think it's worth $100. That's it. People have faith in the value of fiat money. Um, so with the issues with commodity money, fiat money is generally the way that currency has moved. Um, but it does only have value because people think it has value. So on to measurement of the quantity of money. Um, the first thing we have to look at is how do you define what is money? Uh, I mean, if we discuss that cattle can be used as money, well, obviously there's a wide range of definitions. There are some alternative definitions just using the idea of currency, um, you know, the dollar bills, or a little bit more than dollar bills, and everything kind of depends on exactly how liquid the money is. So this, uh, the term liquid goes, is referring to liquidity which is how easy 
Oops, let me move up here. Uh, for liquidity, how easy can uh, some object of value be converted into actual cash? So how 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 easily can it be converted into cash? Right? If you have a if you have a car that has value, but it's probably not very liquid. Right? You can sell it. It just takes a little bit of time, and you'll get money for it. But how you know what is the liquidity of a car? It's not much now. Conversely, if you have a checking account, you may not have money on you, but you have money in the account. That's extremely liquid, and of course, you know, actual cash in your hand, most liquid. But um, you know, there's various amounts of liquidity in objects. So the two that we'll talk about, the two definitions for the money supply, uh, the most narrow is called M1. Uh, that's your coins, your bills, plus most checking account balances. Right, that is considered M1. M1 actually used to be kind of the main thing that for monetary policy that was looked at. Um, M1, cash and checking accounts. That changed, uh, M1 changed as the standard, really, uh, as we'll get in a moment, to M2. So M2 is the, is the more broad, which is uh, definition, and really it's what's used now more by officials to look at the money supply. This contains everything that M1 contained, plus most forms of savings account balances and shares in money market mutual funds. Uh, so why did we go to M1? Well, first we'll look um, a little bit. This is 2009, right? The, the numbers would change a little bit, but you have currency, checking deposits, traveler's checks, other checkable deposits for M1. M2 contains all of that, plus um, savings deposits, money market funds other minor categories. So M1 was more commonly used until ATM machines became more prominent, right? The ability to convert money from a savings account to a checking account at a teller very, very quickly and easily um, made M1 a little bit less reliable because people had access to a vast amount of money pretty easily by just going to an ATM machine, shifting it from a savings account to a checking account. It made M1 not quite as useful for determining the money supply. Now, as far as what you want to consider money, and like what should be considered money and what shouldn't be, it's not really that clear. The more liquid an asset is, the more likely you could count it as some form of money. Um, so if you really think of a cow as money, I certainly don't, but I guess if you use it as a medium of exchange, you might be able to. Uh, Liquidity refers to the ease at which an asset can be converted into cash. Uh, so that's all for now. We'll see you on the next lesson.